It was 2016, I was a military officer back then and I loved my job. I wanted to do well and become successful in this career. So that day, when my boss told me to enter the office, I didn't know at that point in time, but that meeting was a huge turning point in my life. When I went to the office, my boss passed me a book and told me to read it. It was a book called Creating Wealth by Robert G. Allen. This book talked about wealth principles and in less than 10 years, in 2013, I'll be speaking alongside Robert G. Allen himself and I'll be regarded as a wealth expert. So this was one of the first books I read and understood the wealth principles that is seldomly taught. And that's the reason why many people don't ever become wealthy. I'm not saying that monetary wealth equals to success, but I think that all of us, if we understand the wealth principles, we can at least have a choice to what we want to actually achieve in life. So I'm going to explain to you what's the wealth principles and whether you like it or not, you are in the game and you can see how you want to participate in it. So let me explain. The amount of wealth that we get is actually proportionate to the amount of value that we provide to the world. And this amount of value, you can measure it by quality multiplied by quantity. So if you draw it on a graph, it will look like this. This is the quality and this is the quantity. Now this will explain why many people do not become wealthy because most of us started and stay as employee for the rest of our life. Back then when I was an employee, I was creating value for my organization. In order to become more successful and wealthier, I can increase my value by working harder or upgrading myself. Example, by studying masters, going for a PhD, learning new skills and increase my value. The only issue is, even if my quality increase, the quantity of people I'm serving is only one, my employer. Some of us can become wealthy through employment because as we scale our value, we climb out this thing called the corporate ladder. And some of us may reach the top. And when you reach the top, as a CEO, as a C-suit, a CFO, that's where your wealth increase as well. But as you climb the corporate ladder, you gotta ask yourself three questions. The first question is this, does your company has the potential to grow? Because if you're working for a small company, even though you reach the top, it will still be a small portion of wealth. The second question you ask yourself is, is the company structured to reward the employees? Because for example, like Google and Facebook, they reward the employees and as the company grow, the employees become wealthy as well. And the third thing is this, does the company recognize your value? There are some very talented people who are never recognized. So these are three important questions you gotta ask yourself. And let me share with you, the chance of becoming rich through employment is not very high. Only few will reach the top and it will also take a certain amount of luck for you to find a company that has the potential to grow, structure it to reward their employees and also recognize your value for it. People who realize this go on to the next phase called self-employed. When you go to self-employment, what happens is you can reach more people when you work harder. Let me give you an example. A Uber driver, he can serve more people throughout the day and the more customers he finds, the more value he can create and therefore he can make more money. There are some Uber drivers who create more wealth than people who are working in a company. If you can provide even more value, if you are a doctor, a doctor can provide even higher value and if the doctor works harder, like a GP that's near my house, he works every single day including weekend, he can become very wealthy as well. And the higher the quality of the value you provide, plus the more people you reach, the wealthier you become. So let me share with you the interesting fact. When you increase your value, the amount of people you can reach is also potentially higher. When I started my business training people how to invest, initially I had a very small class, like maybe 30 to 40 people. But I constantly think of how I can improve the training and, and also increase the chance of my students becoming successful in investing. That's where eventually I got invited to 20 over different cities and each time speaking to thousands of people. And that's the reason I also accumulated wealth as a speaker doing the business in this training industry. Now the only constraint of this model is time. Because each of us has only got 24 hours, I can travel around, I can speak to thousands of people, I can even go to bigger stages, but there's only so much one person can do. Yes, you can become wealthy, you can accumulate a lot of wealth in your bank account, but to become ultra wealthy, you may want to move on to the next level. And to break through the time constraint, you got to learn how to scale your value. And we can scale using two things. I call them the two T. Through team or through technology. Now, the first T, team, it means that we scale through people. So what do I do when I hit the barrier? I cannot keep traveling every single day for the rest of my life. I begin to train up talented people to actually do what I do. Now with more talented investors and speakers, I was no longer limited to my time. We can actually scale and reach even more people 
in one weekend. I remember in one weekend, we can reach even seven countries in multiple different languages. And that's where the value increases and so did my wealth. In fact, using this method, I built a company that was eventually worth $10 million. But let me share with you the more powerful thing, the next T, which is technology. Now, if you look at some of the biggest business in the world, why are they able to reach billions and billions of people? They use technology like Facebook, Alibaba, Google, Tencent Holdings. In fact, Tencent Holdings is a good example. At that point in time, they were thinking, if we can earn Tencent from everyone that we reach, will become ultra wealthy and they reach the people through technology. So an example of what I did was I record my training into online courses and I was surprised at how fast and how many people I can reach using that one online video. And even the online video that I created in 2016 is still selling up to today. So this is something that can be multiplied and scaled at a totally whole new level. And once you learn how to scale your value through team or technology, you become a business owner. So if there's a chance you want to be ultra wealthy, ask yourself, how can you constantly scale your value in terms of quality and quantity? And also ask yourself, how can you break through using team or technology? I want to share with you one worst type of wealth seeker I've met. And these are people who do not understand their value. The worst type of entrepreneur or business owner are those who jump from one idea to the other idea thinking that the next idea will make them rich. I want to share that I was guilty in my earlier days and when I jump from one idea to the other idea, I do not have enough time to increase the quality of that value and also to learn how to scale that particular value. So each time you throw a new idea, you are starting all over again to learn how to scale this whole entire model. It's really okay to learn new things, but you have to know what you are good in and focus on providing that value. Like a military saying goes, know yourself, know your enemy, a thousand battles fought, a thousand battles won. The important step is to start by understanding yourself and what kind of value can you provide. Now lastly, if you have heard of this idea called the ESBI quadrant, a famous quadrant that is created by Robert Kiyosaki, you realize that E stands for employee and as an employee, there's only so much you can do. S, self-employed, you can do a little bit more, but there's a constraint of time. B, business owner is where you can become ultra rich. So the cash flow quadrant is asking people who want to become wealthy to learn how to jump from E, S to B and also I. Now what is I? I is actually investing. But how do you become rich through investing? It is to invest into businesses that has the potential to continue to reach more people and also spend effort to increase the quality of their value. So some of the famous investors like Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, we look for businesses that has the potential to grow and reach even more people either through team or technology and also at the same time constantly improve their quality. And as the business grow, our wealth will grow together with it. The worst kinds of businesses to invest in are those who are constantly distracted, do not understand their value and jumping from one business to the other. One day they are selling cars, the next day they are selling properties and the next day they are actually going into fashion. So this is the wealth formula. If you are wondering how the ultra rich become so rich, I hope I've provided some answer and you can also think about how you want to participate in this wealth formula. Whether you like it or not, you are part of it. So like my boss who care for me, wanting me to do well, not wanting me to spend 20, 30 years of my life not understanding this wealth principle and regretting later. This is something I hope I did for you as well. So I just want you to have a choice and start doing well right now. I hope you have learned something. Tell me what you have learned and let's achieve financial joy together.